Now this is where things get really weird. Now when we last left off, multicellular life was just beginning to take off. And then the Cambrian period began. 538.8 million years ago, the Ediacaran came to a close and the world entered a very unique period. You see, before this, life was experimenting at a pretty slow pace. Then the Cambrian kicked off when, in a blink, most modern known forms of life just appeared in a biological Big Bang known as the Cambrian Explosion. But did they just appear though? Well, I'll get into whether they did just rapidly evolve or whether something else was at play later on in the video. But first, why don't we take a look at what it was like to walk around Earth during the Cambrian. Snowball Earth was finally over, with most of the continental land masses in the Southern Hemisphere forming the continents of Siberia, Volterra, which would become the northern part of Europe, Laurentia, that would later become North America, and the supercontinent of Gondwana. With the absence of Snowball Earth, the sea levels were much higher, meaning that much of the continents were flooded with warm, shallow seas, which is ideal for life. Now the climate started off fairly cool at the start of the Cambrian, thanks to what had happened before. But by the end of it, things had heated up to greenhouse Cretaceous levels. In fact, unusually high levels of carbon dioxide in the air meant that not only would it have been pretty hot, it also wouldn't have been that comfortable to, you know, breathe. We're not talking levels of suffocating on Mars, total recall style, but you certainly wouldn't have been conscious for very long. There wasn't exactly much to see on land anyway, not quite yet. The real action was going on down under. No, not Australia, I'm talking under the sea. Now, like I said before, this is where we see most major invertebrate taxons first come about. Now, the plants were still trudging along as they had before. Animals, on the other hand, were what gave the Cambrian explosion its namesake. The first revolutionary change that animals made was the evolution of mineralized hard parts. No longer were animals soft-bodied and barely visible to the human eye. They now had shells and exoskeletons. Animals that would be around for years to come first evolved here, such as echinoderms, various mollusks, bryozoa, and arthropods, which were invertebrates with a segmented exoskeleton, including crustaceans, arachnids, hexapods, and the Cambrian's mascot, trilobites. Arthropods were actually the most abundant form of animal on planet Earth and appear in most of the fossil record from this time. Now the list of phyla that first appeared during the Cambrian is incredibly long, so I'll just leave it as saying, there's a lot. Now even though the Cambrian was the advent of mineralized body parts that fossilize more readily, it also has one thing in more abundance than any other period in Earth's history. Lagerstadt. This, this isn't something you can pick up at Oktoberfest. Lagerstadt is a sedimentary deposit with exceptional fossil preservation, often preserving soft tissue. It's thanks to these deposits that we know just how weird things got during this time, with the most famous Lagerstatten being the Burgess Shale. Found in 1909 by paleontologist Charles Walcott, the Burgess Shale can be found in British Columbia, Canada. This exceptional deposit had the usual suspects in it, but also some really, really weird stuff. There were strange mollusks like Wewaxia and Skinella, worms like Canadia and Burgess O'Shata, Lobopodians like Ashia and Hallucigenia, literally named because it looks like a hallucination, and a wide array of shrimp-like arthropods like Habelia, Yehoya, Plenicaris, Tuzoya, and Pitoya. Did, did you get any of that? You're just waking these up now. I'm not. Now one of the Burgess Shale arthropods was already an apex predator. In fact, this thing was the biggest animal on the entire planet. 
Nomlacaris. Okay, the standards weren't exactly higher for big animals during this time, but tell me you would not freak out if a shrimp the size of a dog swam up to you. So how did this weird life just pop out of nowhere? Did it even pop out of nowhere? These kind of questions have been surrounding the Cambrian explosion for years now. So let's go through some theories. The first is that this was indeed an organic diversification event. Since newly evolved cellular meiosis allows for much quicker evolution to occur, these animals could have came about in order to adapt to the countless niches in empty oceans. A lack of competition would have kick-started things, and then an evolutionary arms race meant that these beasties were evolving strange features left, right and centre. This one is actually supported by the fact that we see a sudden drop-off of stromatolites, because newly formed burrowing organisms would have messed up with their way of life. Now surely if these things had evolved more gradually then we would see a gradual drop off of those stromatolites. And if you are struggling with what a stromatolite even is, I do go into that here. We are forgetting one thing though, the evolution of mineralised hard parts. When things are so well preserved, such as the Lagerstatin, we have to question whether it's a reflection of the times, or if it's preservational bias. Maybe life was just as diverse before, but because everything had soft bodies, it didn't preserve quite as well. And then the advent of hard mineralized parts comes along, and all of a sudden things have been fossilized left, right and center, painting a really different picture to reality. So which one was it? Well, more and more evidence is coming up to support the preservational bias theory, but there's still enough evidence to support both theories. One group that definitely showed up around this time are the chordates, a group of animals that gave rise to animals that would rule the earth later on, vertebrates. But you don't want spoilers now, do you? I guess you'll just have to wait until next time.